Hi everyone, welcome to Metaverse Economics, the series where I break down the economies of Web3 games. I'm Kiefer Zhang from Economics Design. Today, I'm going to dive into the economy of the game Pixels and share my perspective as an economics consultant about the potential problem with the Pixels economy, as well as some things that I like about it. So I'll kick things off here with an overview of Pixels gameplay. So the core loop of the game, so what you fundamentally do uh, inside Pixels is gather resources, collect items, and customize your land. But there's a lot of smaller components and interesting experiences that, that make up those different parts of the gameplay experience. So as of right now, that gathering stage mostly focuses on farming, but they're gonna expand that in a variety of other ways in the future, such as having foraging, pets, flower breeding, industry balancing. So there's a lot that's gonna happen um, but as of right now, it's it's mostly farming focused. There are different resources like soil, crops, wood, and water, and these can all be generated by a variety of different industries within the game. So players can grow crops on each farm that they visit, with the farm owner taking a different share of those gathered resources. So they're both private and public lands, the private ones being the ones that are owned by individual players that have these farm plots and in this process, each player sees their own plots, so they aren't competing. So that means that you can go onto somebody else's land, there can be other players there, uh, but you don't have to fight over using a certain plot. Farming involves planting seeds, watering, an optional step of fertilizing, uh, as well as harvesting the final yield of the crop. Harvesting gets experience points, seeds, and that crop yield. A constraint to the whole farming process is energy. So for every action that you want to take, it uses up some energy and you refill this either by waiting or eating food. Players uh, can also get recipes or blueprints that can be used to cook or craft different things. They could have purely cosmetic value. It could also have some sort of utility value within the game. So with that gameplay overview in place, let's talk a bit about the economy and how that works. So there are three main classes of on-chain assets uh, within Pixel. So that's land, resources, and tokens. So starting off with land, free and rented plots are primarily single player instances. So it's just gonna be a single player experience of, of you farming and customizing that land while the own plots have a lot more space, functionality, have the highest yield and have that multiplayer functionality with different people going on to it. Free players can have a sharecropping agreement with a landowner where basically they're giving a share of their outputs to the owners in exchange for the right to use that land. In terms of the resources, there are a variety of different outputs of, um, of lands. The highest share of resources is only available on own land or sharecropping on that owned land. Uh, but there's a there are various different ways that the game can control the rate at which new resources are introduced. So controlling the faucet. So those those include the replenishment times, the inputs that are required to grow a given resource, the number of resources that are generated per action that you take, and also the attention required to actually go through the process of cultivating and harvesting a given resource. There's also token component to uh, to this game as well. So there, there's two tokens involved in the game, both of which have an uncapped supply. The first one of those is called Berry. So that's sort of an in-game soft currency, though it is tradable on external exchanges. People can sell resources for a Berry in the in-game store, and it's burned through purchasing items that players need to progress. So if you want to unlock industries, activities, or other types of content, you need to burn berries in that process. Uh, even non-land owners need berry in order to maintain land. The controls for the berry faucet, or the rate that it's introduced in the economy, are uh, essentially indirectly coming from the same levers that are used to control the resource generation. Since you can trade in resources for berry, their main way of controlling berry is going back to controlling the rate at which these new resources are introduced through methods that I, that I discussed before in the resource section. So the other currency is called Pixel. So that's the premium currency used to buy items, upgrades, and cosmetic enhancements that exist across the, uh, the whole Pixels universe. 
So it's not actually needed to progress in the game, but it's more focused on wanting to show off or save time. So more of kind of your traditional hard currency spend actions. 100,000 new pixel tokens are minted each day and are given out to players who are engaging in desired behavior patterns. So things that the studio thinks are beneficial. This could be simple task completion, but it could also be things where they're engaging with the community or creating user-generated content that are a clear value add and worth being rewarded. It does go to the treasury after a premium item purchase, and then uh, they can decide if the, those tokens will likely be burned. Initially, that decision would be made by the internal team, but later on, that's something that could be made by, as a decision that could be made by the DAO. And so that's how uh, pixels can potentially be taken out of the economy um, after that spend. It's also a component of interoperability. So pixels wants to allow other developers to be able to build a variety of different experiences using the platform they have created. And so this means that there are going to be different worlds that could have their own gameplay mechanics, have their own currencies, have their own stores. Uh, and it opens up a lot of uh, capabilities for uh, other people to create experiences, bring their communities into the platform, uh, also bringing their assets or currencies to, and it really leans into the, the idea of interoperability. So now that we've gone through a bit of how Pixel's gameplay works and how the economy works, I want to dig into a few areas where I see there are potential risks. First risk I see is that the resource faucets are a bit loose. The team doesn't have a great way to control the total quantity of new resources and indirectly from that berry that enters the economy. Uh, it's not very resistant to a situation where there's a scale up in the ratio of extracting players relative to spenders. Uh, and that can be problematic for asset inflation. And the second risk is that I am more generally worried about the sustainability of the economy as a whole. So the sinks for resources in Barry rely on continued demand from players wanting to progress. So once player base growth stalls and it can't infinitely grow forever, or even if existing players slow down on in progression spending and switch more towards extraction, um, pulling out bearing and selling it, pixels might run into a, a problem of uh, just excessive inflation, insufficient sinks for resources and bury, and just see rapid devaluation of these assets. I mean, just a sort of a pump and dump style growth and drop off in the value of a lot of components of the economy. I also see some risks around the interoperability. So they're open to integration with other tokens and projects, creating their own stores. And this creates competition with the pixel token that could reduce demand for it as they're allowing other, uh, other groups to introduce other tokens that can be used to uh, pay for things. And every time that happens, when it theoretically could have been pixel, that's some demand and burn for pixel that is not happening in that scenario. Um, the trade-off uh, that is, is being made with the interoperability is that it does have user acquisition benefits. So it's bringing in other communities, other players who might not otherwise have engaged, but it remains to be seen whether or not that user acquisition benefits of interoperability would sufficiently outpace the competition to pixel spending or the potential loss in demand for pixel as a, a result of opening this, uh, this up with this interoperability plan. I also want to talk a little bit about some things that I like about uh, Pixel's economy. So they are by default not allowing items that have utility across different worlds in this interoperability play. So that's important because the inflationary decisions that one world makes around how many of an item they want to put out is not going to affect another one. So say in, so maybe in one world, you have a shovel that you're creating that is involved in uh, a farming process. And in another world, there's a similar mechanic, but they say, for example, one in one world, you are issuing a 
weapon. Um, so there's some sort of combat um, in that world. And in another world, they also could be combat. You, if it's a sword in one game uh, and you could bring it to another game, they, there might be some issues if what, in one of those worlds, someone creates a huge amount of swords or the studio behind the game creates a huge amount of swords uh, now in the other game, if you can bring all those swords in and they have utility that maps over, now in this other world, it's going to be very difficult for the team that, that built that world to actually sell swords because there's going to be so many coming in from this other one. They're going to have very low value and they're not going to be able to monetize uh, swords if that was a key part of their strategy. Um, and so by default, not having utility, so the actual ability to use that asset um, in another uh, in another world, uh, that improves the capability for monetization across different worlds. But you still have the interoperability in the sense that the cosmetics uh, stay the same, or even items that have utility uh, can still be shown off in another world without having to worry about the impact of inflation of one impacting another. I also like the messaging that they have around being fun first and removing play to earn as a, a core part of their marketing strategy and how they're presenting this to the world. Um, I think this will limit a bit of the potential overheating of the economy from excessive extractive activity brought in by people who are attracted by play to earn messaging. Uh, but I do want to be clear here that this isn't a solution to that risk, um, just saying that your focus is on fun first or even just actually delivering on that and being fun first doesn't necessarily remove the issues that can come from a truly play to earn economy that has a bit of potentially punzi structure of, re of relying on spending from future users. Um, so this, this messaging is a positive in terms of creating a play to earn game that's less likely to be problematic but it doesn't mean that that is a fully solved problem. The last thing that I like that I want to bring up is the gradual decentralization, both in governance and assets. So they're going to be gradually moving a variety of gameplay mechanics on chain, as well as moving some decision-making from a central team to a DAO. And I, I like keeping that central control initially so that they're able to uh, make changes in the early stages and having some of those game mechanics off chain makes it a lot easier for them to uh, to build and make adjustments uh, as they start things off and then can adjust later on. All in all, while the team is building a strong core gameplay experience that should drive some baseline demand to Pixel and Barry, the play to earn components are likely to drive some excessive speculative demand. On top of that, that brings some cyclical volatility into the economy as a trade-off for user acquisition. I am looking forward to seeing how this plays out as this has gotten a lot of attention within the web three gaming space. I hope you found this video useful. And if you're interested in help with the economy or web three strategy for your game, feel free to reach out to us at economicsdesign.com. Thanks for watching. Right.